Developing now an arrest in last night's deadly downtown shooting. Tonight, we see what the suspect posted on social media just moments after the gunfire. Plus, the search right now for two other suspects still on the run. Three victims still in the hospital, one of them just nine years old. It did shatter in places. Tonight, an update on the boy's road to recovery. Plus, commuters back to the scene of the crime 24 hours later. And new at 11, how Seattle hopes to calm fears about downtown violence. We begin our team coverage tonight with significant developments for victims of yesterday's shooting at 3rd and Pine. Cairo 7's Gary Horker talked to a family friend of the nine-year-old who was shot in the leg. And Gary, good news to share tonight. Right. The very good news is a lot of progress. After a couple of hours of very intensive surgery today, putting the bones back in his upper leg, he might be cleared to actually leave Harborview and go back home tomorrow. Here's the challenging part. While he was walking across that shooting scene, a bullet went through his upper thigh, smashed through his femur, and part of the bullet went out the other side. Now he's been up in his room, and his parents have been at his bedside every minute since. In the chaotic moments after eight people were hit by gunfire, first responders surrounded a nine-year-old wounded boy named Judah from Port Orchard. Judah just spent the day with his family and fellow Jehovah's Witnesses at the Pacific Science Center, and they were all walking to take a ferry home. He remembers just walking down the street with his friends and his parents and started to hear gunshots, and then uh, next thing he knew, he was on the ground. A woman in her 50s, believed to be in a wheelchair, died within 20 feet of where Judah fell. There was a, a bullet that pierced his left femur, and thankfully it missed his femoral artery, but it, uh, it entered and exited, and uh, uh, that was the damage that was sustained. And it broke his femur? It did, uh, it did shatter it in places. The family gave us these images of Judah's x-ray to show you the extent of the bone damage and the bullet fragments still left inside, something doctors described as a jigsaw puzzle. The family credits surgeon Dr. Daphne Beingessner with putting all those pieces back together. Amazon told Cairo 7 two of its workers were hurt in the shooting. The company says both are recovering. Of the three people still treated, a 55-year-old woman shot in the stomach is still in intensive care. A 32-year-old man is said to be improving. And Eric says 9-year-old Judah is calm, forgives the shooters, and has never shown anger. Um, after surgery this morning, he just he's unflappable. It's, it's remarkable composure for a 9-year-old. Yeah, the Seattle police officers who gave him first aid seconded that emotion because they came out here this morning and they told Judah's family he was remarkably calm and poised and brave. They listened to what he said. He was lying still the entire time, and they were impressed most of all that he never even cried. We're live, meanwhile, outside Harborview Medical Center. I'm Gary Horker. Kyra 7 new. Strength a nine-year-old should not have to have. Thank you, Gary. Well, tonight, police say one of three suspects is in custody. Two others are armed, dangerous, and on the run. The violence at 3rd and Pine is really nothing new, but tonight the city says it is making changes to address the problem area. Kyra 7's Michael Spears is live right now downtown, and Michael, you can see a heavier police presence there now. You can see a cluster of deputies behind us here, Monique. This is near 3rd and Pine. And earlier today, we saw Seattle Police's mobile command unit moving around this area. Now, tonight is police search for the two remaining shooters. The city says it's now focused on strengthening the police units focused on fighting crime here. Eight people hit by bullets spread across one and a half city blocks. Minutes after the shooting, a man identified on social media as Jamel Jackson posted a video saying he'd been shot. Police tell us he was one of the three shooters who opened fire following a dispute outside McDonald's and was identified by gang unit detectives. They knew him to be a felon, and they knew that he could not be in possession of a firearm, which he had in his hand in the video. Jackson was busted in 2017 for illegally having a gun outside this same McDonald's. A busy area already a focus for police, now under a bigger spotlight. As investigators search for the two other shooters who they say were involved, 24-year-old William Tolliver and 24-year-old Marquise Tolbert, who together have been arrested more than 75 times. We have seen an uptick in gang violence in this region. The city says it's now adding more detectives to the gang unit and positioning a mobile command unit in this part of downtown. Mayor Ginny Durkin responded to questions Thursday about repeat felony offenders 
who are quickly released back on the streets. And because of the gang connections, the repeated convictions, and the involvement of guns on a repeated basis, that the chief and I have also talked to the federal prosecutor to see if we can get them involved as well. Now today, bail was set for $50,000 for Jackson, the, sh the suspect who is already in custody. Investigators say they collected shell casings from three different caliber of firearms from this scene. Guns, the mayor said, should have never been in the hands of those suspects. For now, we're live in downtown Seattle with Michael Spears, Cairo 7 News. Okay, so let's look again at the focus of this manhunt. Marquise Tolbert and William Tolliver, again, considered armed and dangerous. So if you see them, call 911. And if you have additional tips for police, here is their tip line, 206-233-5000. Now, meanwhile, the Union for Seattle Officers warns that the increased police presence at 3rd and Pine will only be a temporary solution. Union Chief Kevin Stockey said it is just not sustainable because of the department's decades-long staffing problem. Now, Boston is often used as a comparison for Seattle because it's about the same population. But federal census and Bureau of Justice statistics show over the last 20 years, Seattle has consistently had nearly 1,000 fewer sworn officers than Boston, even though it is now a larger city than Boston. When we talk about emphasis patrols, that's a band-aid because those are using your current resources Stuckey told us he would like to see two to three hundred more officers in Seattle. He also says others up the law enforcement chain need to do more to help them. When I see that, um, like some people have, oh, he has a 30 misdemeanor arrest. Our part in it is to make the arrest. There are other community members, our, our other law enforcement partners, they have to take it from there. Right now, SPD has about 1,440 sworn officers. Business is largely back to normal near 3rd and Pine, but not for the people who live and work there. They are frustrated and fed up. And Cairo 7's Jessica O oh is live downtown. Jessica, they are demanding change. Monique, it is no secret that this area is a hotbed for crime, but it is also no secret that a lot of people feel that nothing is being done about it. And after gunshots rang out just outside this McDonald's yesterday and multiple people dropped to the ground, people in this area told us tonight that something needs to change. Oh, well, the fact that it was that blatant in the middle of the day. It's senseless. It's really senseless. Get us some help. Get us some protection. There's a sense of helplessness looming over the people who live and work near 3rd and Pine. It may seem like business as usual, but there was a mass shooting in this busy area yesterday. On any given day, I would have been here when it happened, and it could have been me. Sherry Conwell walks her dog here several times a day. So my fear is for everybody that has to walk, and we live here. We have to walk here. What do we do? We need a safety strategy, first and foremost. The Downtown Seattle Association says it seems like criminals are controlling this area, and they're tired of it. The criminals feel way too comfortable coming there and selling drugs and shoplifting, selling goods, and violence like this too often is the result. President John Scholes says it comes down to a need for more police patrols and better prosecution. Exactly 24 hours after the mass shooting, officers swarmed the same McDonald's, this time on a drug call. This could happen at any time of day here. That's what's truly terrifying. Customers like Octavia would rather order food in the presence of police, knowing what happened outside McDonald's Wednesday. So much stuff happens all the time, and it was bound to happen, unfortunately. She and others just hope the mass shooting is what sparks the kind of change that this notorious area desperately needs. They need to stop passing the buck, that it's a homeless problem, it's a gang problem. The problem is we don't have enough cops in Seattle. And the ones we do, they're treated with disrespect on a daily basis. I've watched it. And if you live or work in this area, the Downtown Seattle Association is asking that you join them for a meeting at Westlake Park tomorrow to talk some more about the issues that are stemming from this neighborhood. They say truly that enough is enough. For now, reporting live in downtown Seattle, I'm Jessica O, Cairo 7 News.